Uh, Jim, in a previous interview, you said that despite his attitude and lack of maturity, Shawn Michaels was the premier worker of the decade of the 90s. You had also said that Ray Stevens was the premier worker of the 60s. I'm curious as to who your picks are for the premier workers of the 70s, 80s, and 2000s. He says, fuck the 2010s, they can fend for themselves. <laughs> well, the 80s got to be flair. Mm. Um, I... I mean, you know, see, there was so much good talent in the 70s and 80s, and especially in the 70s, because Rick was just coming up at that point, and there was a lot of competition. I think Rick would take the crown in the 80s. Um, the 70s, to be honest with you, I don't want to make, I don't want to say something here, because as soon as I say something and we get off the 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 air, then I'm going to say, oh, my God, I should have said so-and-so now I look like an idiot because there were so many guys that were so good in the 70s. Well, let's, and let's I got free to it up. Let, let's up. let's let mention a few. Well, my God, I mean, just the NWA champions. First of all, in the 70s, for NWA champions, you had Dory Funk Jr., Jack Briscoe, Harley Race, Terry Funk, and Ric Flair. <laughs> so, so you were, you were spoiled. Was, in a 10-year period, you had what was that five of the greatest wrestlers of all time held the NWA world title. Mm. Uh, and then you had, and I'm, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but Jerry Lawler is one of the best workers and one of the best talkers that has ever existed in this business. And he may not have been a physical Marvel and he may not have been a great mat wrestler, but as far as a worker, he was a huge bump taker, a big risk taker. He was as good as a heel as he was as a baby face. Um, and his matches were always exciting and he drew huge crowds in the same town for 25 years every week so sorry he's one of the best but then you've also my god uh just uh, look at the uh the the talent roster that the carolinas had in the 70s when you're talking about the black jack mulligans and the ricky steamboats and the ole and Arne, or ole and gene andersons and the the you know the the whole nwa elite worked the carolinas but you also had uh, great talent in in Texas, and you also had great talent in Florida. And, oh my God, in, and Dusty was a big star in the 70s in Florida. Was he the best in-ring performer? No, but he was a huge star. But uh, there was a lot of great talent. I don't, you know. It's tough. For the 90s, it's I'd tough. also like to throw in Bret Hart, if, 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 if I could, in addition well, to Shawn Michaels. And then, then, see, then that's where you break it down because then you start going, wait a minute, you talking about the best chicken or the best beef? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because Shawn Michaels was the most spectacular, most effortless, most uh, uh, awe-stunning, you know, performer in the ring in the 90s, but that was in a more high-spot style than Brett, who was always more legitimate and more credible and a little bit more ground-based, but his shit looked like it hurt more and Sean's was prettier. So then that's when you start bringing it down into the beef and chicken discussion. I guess, I guess for me, I prefer beef then. Because uh, I, I like the more ground based stuff. You've always of been that fan of, of beef. <laughs> you love the beef. What can I say? Uh, what about the 2000s? Um, it, to be honest, after, I, I've quit paying attention. <laughs> I mean, the, name, you know, the names that I would throw in would actually be probably Benoit and Kurt Angle. And, and you would be throwing in great names. And, of course, I've uh, over the past 10, 15 years, I've not uh, studied as I used to. So if you'd have said, uh, you know, I would have had the time to think about the time frame. Yes, Benoit was still part, and so was Angle of the 2000s. You've got Benoit, you've got Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, Eddie Guerrero, too, sure. I think there was probably a period of time when I might have said Rey Mysterio. Um, a guy I would currently say who I have to say— Sorry. I, let me let me just say sure. Ray was never the best performer in the business. He was the best performer in the style that he used. And he was a great star. And the reason why he overcame the size difference was because nobody was ever nobody else ever that size was Ray Mysterio. It's like it's like somebody else being the Undertaker. It would have died in six weeks. Totally unique. Yeah. He so that he doesn't really count, but at the same time. Still, there has to be something said for the fact that he was a great high flyer and a colorful guy, but was he the best in-ring performer in the entire industry? Probably no, not. No. Um, the the guy that I actually currently enjoy, because I, I do watch the current WWE product, uh, who uh, his character I'm not a huge fan of is Randy Orton. 
who is one of the most beautifully fluid m- movers yeah. I've ever seen. It's just like, golly, this guy's physically talented. Um, yeah, Rand, Randy ranks right up there. I think even Heyman one time said, what four guys would you take You know, from the WWF, start your own promotion? He said, Randy Orton, Randy Orton, Randy Orton, and Randy Orton. Yeah. Um, you know, he's got the bloodlines, his father and his grandfather. Uh, I think we did a heck of a job uh, breaking him in and training him here in Louisville. Um, I think he has excelled and, and sometimes, uh, his mental attitude has sometimes over, overridden and got more headlines than his physical prowess. But, uh, but Randy's exceptional. And I'll tell you, to be honest, and I'm going to admit right now, I have watched very little wrestling over the past few years, but I did, as I talked about on the program, see Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz. Oh, yes. Dolph, Dolph Ziggler is very good. And it, and I did that. I came away with two things. Uh, one, the Miz ended up on my television because his babysitter was distracted and let him wander off. <laughs> and two, Dolph Ziggler is the epitome of a pro wrestler. He, his body language, his facial expressions, the way he carries himself, his attitude that he projects, his work in the ring, his timing, his psychology. I was blown away that he was able to be that good and have a good match with this Miz clown. Um, so, you know, Ziggler has got to be up there, but I, I can't say how much better he is than the rest of the field because I haven't seen most of them. Yeah. Um, I, he's pretty much head and shoulders above most folks. Um, him, Randy Orton, of all the people in the world, I have to say gold dust is amazing right now. He is. He's, I, he's got it. He's in phenomenal shape. I, I just, for a guy who's, I think he's 44, he's been wrestling for what? Yeah. Ever. Um, he's been wrestling since 86. I believe he has to be in the best shape of his life right now. It, it's amazing how good he looks. And he, in a lot of ways, or maybe this is, I should say this in the reverse. Randy Orton reminds me a lot of gold dust. They, they both do this power slam that the way they pivot, it's so beautiful. It's just so goddamn beautiful. It's well, so effortless. And, and actually part of that comes from growing up in the business. And you got to think when they were kids, they were able to watch, the talent we were just talking about from the 70s and 80s, the guys who really knew how to do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they knew what the stuff was supposed to look like before the first day they even stepped in the ring. And so that's an advantage that you can't, but between the genetics and the opportunity to have seen the greats in person and saw how they moved and what they did, you, you, there's no substitute for that. Yeah, and, and Goldust is now uh, tagging with the character they're calling Stardust, which is Cody Rhodes. The, the, yeah. the younger brother and he's just as good and and what has amazed me the most about him is is in the transition from one character to another being cody rhodes and now being stardust how his move sets entirely changed and he managed to make that work and seem different and move differently and not everybody can do that and it's quite special so it, those are the kind of things that keep me watching pretty much <laughs> if i had to explain Just- why yeah. Dustin was all from the time he started his first uh nickname was Dustin the Natural Rhodes. He was a natural and he got sidetracked with his conditioning and and out of the ring problems for for quite a while there, but the the person is still the same and and I got to be honest, I never uh was a fan of the gold dust gimmick uh just cuz it you know, they took it so far that it it became that silliness that was that pervaded everything they did in the late 90s and it was just silly. And I would have much preferred to have seen, you know, a guy out there that that could just scorch the ring when he got in and 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 tore it up and was a great performer. But Dustin somehow managed to take what would have been a kiss of death for most people and somehow make it work for him. So you got to give him credit for that, too. 